Now, this past week, I came across a debate on human free will. And I will leave a link to that in the description area so you can check it out if you'd like. Now, as I was watching both sides present their case, there was one thing that I noticed to be severely lacking from either side. Something that, while not shocked by its absence, I was saddened by it. I mean, I find it to be very unfortunate that it was missing from this very important conversation. But, you know, when mere points of view get argued over, this is something that often gets overlooked. What is this that I saw missing? Well, that is what we're going to talk about in this video. Here we go. So welcome to our kitchen counter, the perfect place to enjoy some very delicious conversation, all the while sipping on some richly satisfying coffee. Oh, yeah. Mm. Very satisfying indeed. So, what was missed in this debate? Well, let's not put the cart before the horse, shall we? Let's begin by answering a simple question. What does it mean to be a Christian? Now, you might be thinking, dude, you say that each and every video. What's up with that? Well, quite honestly, it's because I keep encountering people who claim to be Christian, who seem to have forgotten, who think that it is only a religion with religious practices and mandates that need to be kept and observed. So, I honestly find it's important to always stress this. So, what is Christianity? It is a following of Jesus that involves, first and foremost, a relationship with Him that then leads immediately to studentship from Him that then leads immediately to living a life for him based upon everything he teaches. And so, you know, even this matter of human free will must be tied to a relationship first and foremost. Or it is rather pointless to talk about, truthfully, I mean, from the perspective of Christianity. Now, you might be thinking, oh great, you're going to be talking about love again, aren't you? That's what was missing. Don't you ever get tired of talking about love? No, no, I don't actually. And yet, if I may make an inference from your question, it suggests that you do get tired of talking about it. So, could that be? That perhaps, perhaps, that's because you do not have an adequate understanding of what love truly is. See, I keep talking about it because the Bible itself keeps talking about it and how important it is to life. And, you know, the Bible never says that love is merely an emotion you know, a set of feel-good, warm fuzzies that you have about yourself and the world inspiring you to say, all we need is love, man. That is a very stunted understanding of love. See, everywhere love is mentioned, it involves doing things, taking actions based upon it, giving of yourself to others, living things out. See, love is also always about someone else, you know, other than ourselves. Whether uh, that is that other person is a fellow human being or God himself, it is always directed toward another. See, the biblical view is this, if I may sum it up. To love is to be living life. Now, I'll save an exploration of love in the Bible for another day. That's not the topic of our chat. 
But I will list several passages where Jesus tells us just how important it is and, you know, where the apostles tell us how vitally important, how basic it is to life in Christ. See, love is a way of living. Okay, well then, um, coming off the soapbox now. So, what does all of that have to do with free will? Well, let's take a moment and, and, and think about the friendships that you and I have, right? Any friendship that you have. You know, whether that friendship leads to someone being our best friend or even a marriage partner. Or maybe just an everyday type of friend, you know. A good friend, but not the best. Okay, I'm digging a hole. Moving on. Don't we freely choose who we start that friendship with? You know, and and who we walk away from. So we meet a person. We evaluate who he or she is. We think about what she says and does. What he stands for. And based upon all that, we then freely choose to relate to that person or not. And even among our friends, our circle of friends, we freely make decisions, right? I mean, do we not then choose from that circle of friends who becomes our best friend or even who to enter into marriage to, into marriage with? See, we freely choose choose these things, right? And in human relationships, and that's the only ones we can have because we're human, right? That is just the way it is. In love, free choices are involved. The first person must choose freely to offer that love, be that love of a friend, love of somebody more serious than a friend. And The other person must freely choose to accept that, to become your friend, to become more involved with you than a friend, right? That must be chosen. Or, simply put, it is not love. I mean, we all recognize that forcing someone or manipulating them into a relationship that he or she truly doesn't want, that's rather on the abusive side of things, is it not? You know, meaning that this is all about one person satisfying his or her desires while completely disregarding those of the other person. And that is not love. So, a choice must be made. And a choice, by definition now, involves at least two options. Or there is no choice at all. In relationships... This choice is between yes and no. Or, as it is put in 1 John, it is between loving our brothers or not loving them. Now, John uses the word hate instead of not loving, but in the context, John means to not love. Not hate like you and I think about hate. Okay. Oh. Oh. Now, here's an interesting thought. If we were to take away that free choice, the ability to freely choose, you know, one made willingly, we would also then be taking away the ability to love. And that is to take away one of the very significant things that makes us something other than a robot. You know, one who goes around merely doing what they are told, never asking any questions. See, that is not who we are. We are individuals uniquely made in the image of God. And God chose to love us. And he wants us to choose to love him in return. Well, that the choice is real is seen in Luke chapter 16 where Jesus says we cannot love two masters. We must choose between the two, to love one and hate the other. And again, that means to not love the other. And the choice given is between God and money. 
And what is the love of money but the love of our own selfish interests? You know, what benefits us, nobody else? And here, only we can choose who we love. Well, to that, some might ask, and indeed, this is the opinion of half of those involved in the debate I watched, okay? But they might ask, doesn't this free will stuff mean that a person has been elevated to the position where they can thwart God's will by saying no, and so impinge on his sovereignty? I mean, are human beings truly greater than God? Don't think so. Well, in, in answer to that, no, it doesn't impinge upon God's sovereignty, nor does it try to make the created being greater than the creator. For in his sovereignty, God set all this in motion to begin with. I mean, since in his sovereignty, he chose to want human beings to love him he had to create them with the ability to love, right? Which means he did indeed have to give them the ability to freely choose either to love or not. Which means in his sovereignty, he has chosen to allow human beings to be able to say no to his desire to be loved by them. This is the sovereign, divine plan from the get-go. Now, this has to be so, or the possibility of some people choosing to love him, to authentically love him, just simply would not exist. See, everyone has the option to love him. But real life teaches us that some... Rather, only some ever do. A lot of people say no. That's what we see happening all around us. And yes, that is a very sad thing. But there are also some who do choose to love God. And that is a very glorious thing. It's the person's choice. And without that choice, well, that some who do love, would become none who do love, because they could not. Now, yes, there is much, much more that can be said about this topic, and there are many resources available to you. Now, as I've said, I will link to the debate, which started me thinking on all this in the description area, and I will also link to a couple of other videos I found on this topic as well. And worry not, I will list all some passages in the, from the Bible that specifically deal with how important love is to God and so to us. Well, okay then. Let me know what you think about all this. You know, agree or disagree. I'd love to hear from you. And please, please tell me why you think the way you do. For that is how wonderful conversations can begin. Ones in which may, we may both grow. Well, in our relationship with God and perhaps even as friends, and that would be a very nice thing. Well, until next time, take it easy, take it slow, and may coffee into your cup always flow.